Hello, Facebook fans and YouTube fans of DX Engineering. It's Tuesday afternoon here in the Eastern Time Zone of the USA. It's 1715 Zulu on April 12th, 2022. And it's time for Tuesdays with Tim and Jeff. Along with me today is Jeff, KB8CWT. And uh, we are in our shacks and we are thinking about spring. And uh, boy, the weather has finally straightened out, Jeff. Yeah, it's a beautiful sunny day here in Ohio right now. And yes, spring has arrived. Yes, and, and when you drive by and you're you're pulling the boat like you did yesterday, I know that uh, that spring is here because you're not going to bring that boat out and then we're going to get snow on it. Oh, no, it's official now. So, Jeff, have you done any operating from the boat? Uh, just some uh, two-meter 440 uh, and some D-Star stuff. That's all I've done. Uh, but I, I think I'm going to try to get with John uh, this summer and maybe see if we can do something from the boat out there, a parks on the air from the boat. Yeah, that that seems like that's the next evolution. I know you you operate from your camper, yep. and you've been quite successful at operating from the camper. Now, when you when you take your camper out and you've got your portable uh, station, um, which radio do you use? I've been taking the uh, Yaesu 891 with me. Um, the 891, okay. Yep. And the, the M-Pass antenna from Chameleon? M-Pass, yep, 2.0 uh, Chameleon antenna, yep. Okay. And so do you ever get the opportunity to demonstrate amateur radio to other campers? I have a couple times. Uh, some people have stopped by the campsite uh, and uh, while I've been doing some operation. Uh, this year where I'm camping, I think I'm going to be a little bit more visible where I might be able to put something out there and let people know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah. The campsite I had before was kind of tucked away. You know, that, that would be great because, uh, you know, there are a lot of people that are curious, and especially mm -hmm. these days with communications, you know, um, it's more important than ever to have a backup plan to, to communicate with your family, uh, your friends, uh, et cetera. And amateur radio is certainly uh, very good for that. Um, you know, uh, last weekend I was over to Ham's house, and uh, he was uh, he was struggling with a couple of questions. And I know you get asked these questions too, Jeff. Um, you know, you have a vertical antenna. Uh, do I put a ground rod there? And uh, the answer is yes. You do put a ground rod right where your vertical antenna is. Yep. Um, that that ground rod doesn't do anything for the antenna's efficiency. That does not replace radials. This is purely about lightning protection. You know, so you want to make sure that that ground rod at the base of the vertical is bonded to the coaxial shield on the feed yep. line, you know, so that uh, you've got a ground point there. And then when the coax gets to the house, you also want to bond the shield to another ground rod. And the shield provides the connection between the two ground rods, right? And then that that connection is also bonded to the uh, service entry ground. Um, so you have so there's no voltage potential difference. Right. And that way, you lessen the chances that lightning is going to uh, cause a problem. So ground rod at the vertical, bonded to the shield, ground rod before you come in the house. Remember that the the old thing on those slides, Jeff. We want to keep lightning outside. Absolutely, yep. Don't invite lightning inside. And I know, Jeff, you've talked to so many guys that have had lightning damage. Yep. And we have a lot of guys who want to put those lightning protectors on a bus bar right behind their radios as well. Yeah. I, you know, I guess that's better than nothing. But, better than nothing. Yeah. You've but brought it it's in. Much better, much better to have that stuff outside because we want to. We want to dissipate that charge outside and not invite it in because, you know, when lightning gets into a radio, Jeff, I mean, that's just a mess. Oh, yeah. It, that, that, it, and so not only does it destroy uh, maybe your your ham equipment, it could get into your TV sets and get in the electrical line and, and really cause some Absolutely. big time damage. Right. That's that's very true. So, yeah, you want to you want to do your best to. Uh, Keep it outside, and as always, I can't say enough good about uh, Ward's book, Grounding and no. Bonding, Radio Amateur. And uh, 
we're going to have uh, Ward's going to give a whole session on this, a one hour session at Contest University. It's contestuniversity.com. Oh, and, uh, you know, the, he is constantly learning things too. You know, when he went from the first edition to the second edition, which this is, he, he learned some things. Uh, you know, there were a lot of reader feedback. And uh, so he's incorporated that into this new book. And of course, Jim Brown, K9YC, has been very helpful as well, sharing his knowledge. And uh, if you want to, you can go on to uh, K9YC's website for a lot of great grounding and bonding information. That's K9YankeeCharlie.com. Jeff, let's see who we have here in the chat room. Uh, we've got two Echo Zero Radio Echo Echo. And we have Joe, Kilo Delta 9, India, Echo Golf. He's on his lunch hour, and that's where you'll be here in a minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got India Tango 9, India Delta Golf. And uh, let's see. Jason says, hook up some APRS on the boat. <laughs> yeah, course, there we go. And, of course, John KJ3X, who's on the DX team, uh, knows all about APRS. Yeah. Yeah. Greg K3VLR has got a big APRS presence here in Western PA. So uh, John's right in the middle of that. From British Columbia, it's Victor Echo 7, United Tango Victor, and India Uniform 3, Bravo Tango Yankee. Now, here, here's what's interesting about Valerio, Jeff. Um, I was giving a tour last Friday. These were um, Grove City College electrical engineering seniors that mm. were here at K3LR. I'm tuning around 20 meters, and who do I hear but Valerio? <laughs> so he, he he gave us a couple of chows. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, you you never know who you're going to see in the chat room, and then you know to talk to Valerio on the air. I mean, it was just great. So, and uh, the kids got a big charge out of it. Let's see. Mark says, "Howdy, do you guys have or know?" of a modern replacement for the old polyphaser AC impulse suppressor. Um, you know, I thought we were selling the uh, polyphaser AC suppressor, but it may be out of stock. Um, there are various other suppressors, and I, I guess what I would do is I would consult with uh, the K9YC website, and I would also Google, you know, AC impulse suppressor and uh, see see what you come up with. Um, let's see. We've got I operated while camping. Let's see. With a 20-meter dipole and a 10-tech Scout 555. Now, that uh, that 555 is a little bit of an older radio, but still very good for a nice radio. doing uh, camping there. So, And uh, please include your call sign when you're making comments. We got Whiskey Juliet 3 United in from Philadelphia, and it's nice and warm down there. And Don, great to see you guys. Thanks for being there. 73 from Don in Michigan. It's Kilo Delta 8 Papa Alpha X-Ray. Well, thank you, uh, Don, and I see you've got the Ukrainian flag there. So uh, uh, very, very good. Let's see. We've got... Uh, our friend, the steel man, November three, Juliet Delta smiles and sunshine beaming into the mill via your show today. And of course, uh, Jeff is uh, one of the uh, engineering minds behind all the success of uh, making steel here uh, in Northwestern Pennsylvania at the old Sharon steel plant. Thank God for steel man. He, he does yeah. a great job down there and he loves watching the show. Um, let's see. We've got uh, Joe cat in the hat. K0NEB from Nebraska. I got all my grounding bars and lightning arresters from DX Engineering last year when I rebuilt my station. And I'll bet, Joe, now that you've got everything bonded and grounded properly, I'll bet it all works better. I mean, it, it just does. The tall guy, John, K3STL, he was up in the store not too long ago with uh, Cookie, Jeff, oh, w yeah. WC3O. And... Uh, Let's see, we've got Dan, WA4 Mike, Oscar Mike. Hello, uh, good afternoon, Tim and Jeff. What's up with that paper they printed the May QST on? Uh, you know, Dan, that uh, I, I was looking for my QST just before the show, but I didn't have enough time to bring it down. 
Uh, do you have Make UST there, Jeff? Yes. And there was a comment about the uh, the paper that they're using that it's a uh, temporary uh, right. fix for the paper shortage and things. Right. But you know what, Jeff? I actually like the. <laughs> I, like I was the... looking at it. Be... That's why I almost <laughs> forgot to get on today. So I was looking for looking at this. I think it looks really nice. I really, really do. I like it. I like the matte finish. Yes. And, you know, those glossy pages, they stick together. They do. And sometimes they're hard to read also because the light's shining off of them. Yeah. So I actually, you know, I guess it's just a change for this month or maybe a couple of months, but I actually like the new paper. <laughs> I, I, I do too. Like I say, I was reading it just before we got on. I almost forgot to yeah. get on. You know, uh, the other thing that's in there, uh, Jeff, is a couple of things. So field day now, everybody can work everybody. So the home stations can work all yeah. the home stations. That's a permanent change, and I think that's good. But another thing for field day is you can't run any more than 100 watts, no matter yeah. what class you're in. No matter if you're at home or if you're in the field, 100 yep. watts. I think that's a great idea. I do too. Yep. You know, that, that just cuts down on the QRM. Most people have 100 watts anyway. Right. You know, so... And there's really, I mean, we're, we're trying to talk to each other in the U.S., and we can do that with 100 watts. Absolutely, we can. And then uh, there's an, a new uh, digital contest mm -hmm. that is the beginning of June. And it's FT8 and FT4, and I believe it's 160 through 6 meters. And uh, you can only run 100 watts in that. And I right. thought that was great, too. I mean, FT8 is supposed to be a weak signal deal, right? It is. Uh, yeah. What's funny about FT8 is somebody keeps calling me, one of our customers, asking me when I'm going to get on FT8, when I'm going to get FT8. <laughs> he hears me saying someday I'm going to. Yeah, one of these days uh, you can uh, put that on. It's not hard to do, and no. uh, and you'll work a lot of guys, that's for sure. Let's see here. Kilo Delta 2 Yankee Alpha Echo from uh, Fort Drum. And uh, he may be in the military from the looks of the photo there, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, Whiskey One Quebec Papa is on, Mike, from Maine. And uh, Don says he had trouble driving a ground rod for about a 12-foot diameter area. Eventually, I dug a six-inch deep trench, eight foot long, and buried it. Well, that's a good idea, uh, Don. When you have trouble getting into rock, that is one way to... Uh, Take care of it. And uh, Andy says, uh, I sent him some info on bonding in the UK. Okay, Andy, good. And uh, Kevin Forrester, that's KL7KY. I think he's, uh, no, he doesn't have a new call. His friend does. Um, but uh, nice to have you on from uh, Anchorage, Alaska, Kevin. And uh, Robert is on. Rob NC0 or NC8I. I do not invite lightning in, and I expect it to leave the way you planned. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet there's a story there, Jeff. I think there might be. I bet there is. Whiskey 9 Papa Juliet is on as well. And uh, let's see here. Got a couple of conversations going on in here. Bob the Traveler, my shack is properly grounded and bonded. Ward's book really clarified the correct methods for sure. So that's good. And from Denmark, it's Oscar Zulu 4, Papa Alpha Tango. And Victor Kilo 1, Delta Oscar November is on. And uh, Sun is still a ways out from uh, getting up there for Wednesday morning. And uh, Whiskey 7 Hotel United is on. And uh, let's see here. Can I attach multiple copper strip ends to the same hole um, and bolt on a small copper bus bar? Yeah, you could do that. As, as long as those connections are clean, Jeff, you want to use the SS30, you know. Oh, absolutely. You make, make sure you, you want to get that all over your fingers and your face. <laughs> and It just goes everywhere. <laughs> and you can't get it off. No, nope, <laughs> no. It's impossible. Um Let's see who else do we have here this morning, uh, this afternoon. Kilo Echo Eight, Delta Oscar. See you at Dayton. I have my tickets. Okay, Don, we'll see you there. And 
Bob the Traveler says, I like QST's new paper better than the previous glossy stuff. I think they're on to something. I, I think they are. You know, Kilo Papa 4 Radio Yankee is on. And uh, Matt says he just brought, bought his uh, grounding book. And uh, Joe says, uh, is there a recommended distance suggestion for driving a ground rod distance from the home foundation? Um, I would space it out about a foot or two, Joe, so that you don't get into any of the gravel that might be around the uh, foundation. A foot or two is, is a good thing. And then, you know, run a good heavy wire from the ground rod uh, right to your uh, bonding bus so that you can uh, get onto the shields of all the coax. And again, lots of great information in the Ward Silver book. So, you know, Jeff, I think it's time for you to go to lunch and it's time for me to go back to work. We've got Don, one more thing here. Let's see. Um, Don says, Tim was uh, watching one of Dave Kassler's videos on grounding and learned of a soil modifier that can help make a better ground. Yes. Uh, there are treatments that you can put in the soil that can help make a better better ground and various companies sell those that's not something we have at dx but you can make a, a little bit better ground if you've got uh, trouble with real sandy soil and uh, soil that is not very conductive so there you go jeff it's been hey, great to see yeah go ahead big, big important question for you yeah is our retail store open that is a great question, Jeff. And you know, I know you get to ask that. And when I'm talking to clubs at night, I get asked that too. Yep. And uh, yes, the retail store is open. And uh, we got a couple of guys in there that you've trained, Mark and Wayne, and uh, maybe even another uh, guy or two. So uh, the retail store is open. Uh, showroom is open six days a week. And of course, if you know your part number, you can come in seven days a week. Yeah. And yep. Uh, yep. Fix pick stuff up not only in Talmadge but also in Sparks Nevada so yes. there's uh, two places you can do that and uh, Jeff you, we want to remind everybody about the blog on allbands.com great information there on lots of topics so please go to uh, check out on allbands.com you'll be glad you did there's great information there on lots of technical stuff and operating and uh, you'll have some fun too until we see you on Thursday for the Manufacturer Showcase 73 from DX Engineering.